Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. <laughs> I almost said Coffee Craft. That was yesterday. And the day before, we started a new, we finished up uh, Season 1, New Year's Eve, and we started Season 2, New Year's Day. Or, sorry, Season 0, Season 1. Season 2 is Games Revisited, which we're getting ready to do right now as soon as I get my, my head in the game. A few days off and a little irregular work schedule leaves, uh, yeah, all sorts of fun. So, here we are. Season 2 of Games Revisited. As you can tell by the title card right over there, we are playing Chrono Trigger. And um, it is uh, it is a wonderful game of my childhood. If you're keeping tabs on the series uh, throughout the holidays, while I did my little uh, nostalgia trip games of my youth... I mentioned during the SNES phase that this was one of the games that I've played many, many times and uh, that I wasn't going to go into it then because we're going to do it now. So just kind of uh, hit the highlights of the game. Uh, Chrono Trigger was an RPG developed by Square before Square merged with Enix to become Square Enix. And it was originally created for the SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, in 1995. In 99, it was re-released for the PlayStation. In 2001, it was included in Final Fantasy Chronicles, because uh, there, there was a fair amount of overlap in the teams that worked on Chrono Trigger and the teams that worked on Final Fantasy. There... there yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on there, and you'll see it in the game art. You'll see it in some of the game design, um, the active battle system that we use and that we're going to be using in Chrono Trigger, is very similar to stuff you've seen off and on throughout a fair amount of um, of the the Final Fantasy games. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, I, I I think of Final Fantasy VII, which is the other place that really sticks in my mind that I've seen this type of active battle system. And uh, that, that is in no small part because Final Fantasy VII was another one of those games that I, I've played through many times. But unlike Chrono Trigger, I never beat Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I, but that's another story for another day. Uh, ask me in between the videos. So um, there have been a couple other ports since then, like in 2011, Chrono Trigger was uh, released. Oh, sorry, 2008, it was released for the DS. In 2011, it was released in Japan for iOS. Um, I don't know if that, not being a Apple person, um, I don't know if that ever ever changed and it got released beyond that. I, I couldn't find anything documenting that as of as of this recording. Uh, it also went into the uh, Wii's Virtual Console uh, about the same time, 2011, and it got re-released again on the PlayStation Network for the PlayStation 3 in 2011. An Android version came out in 2014 for your phones and tablets. Uh, and the Steam version, the version that we're going to be playing throughout this series was released in 2018. Yes, that's right. Uh, a mere two years ago. And I shudder to think of the fact that 2018 is now technically a mere two years ago. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll go through the story. We'll go through, we'll go through the game. Uh, just to kind of recap, in case this is your first introduction to Games Revisited, this is a nostalgia trip, so we're not going to do a two-hour speed run, try to beat it in the fastest possible time, skip, 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 hope you read fast, or pause, if you, <laughs> pause the video if you want to see what actually popped up on the screen, uh, nor is this going to be a long and lingering uh, casual playthrough. I, I am going to try to keep a moderate pace. I want to really focus on the game itself and the gameplay. Um, and, and more importantly, the story. That is the reason why I have played this game, I don't know how many times. Of the 20 some odd endings, I don't think I've found them all, or at least I don't remember them all. 
Uh, I know, I know I played through and got at least a half dozen of the different endings. One of the fun, one of the things that made Chrono Trigger so fun is that you could get a different ending depending on how you played the game. So we'll, we'll come up to a few decision points, especially early on. And as we go along and I'll kind of point out some things here and there, um, after I beat it the first couple of times, I did go get the, uh, Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. We will actually be referencing that as we go. Um, I'm also going to be referencing a strategy wiki guide because some of the names have changed since the original release. Um, there have been a few other minor changes here and there. Like in the original release in 95, Chrono Trigger used a lot of Roman numerals and so far from the, the quick little bits I've played through on the uh, Steam port it looks like they actually removed most of the uh, most of the Roman numerals I, I shudder to think about what that what that implies yeah I'm not gonna think on that one too hard next I'll be whining about rotary phones and analog watches <laughs> Sorry. And, um, all right. So one of the other things that I'm going to do that's a little bit different from previous editions in season one, when I was playing through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, I did a two ish, two to three hour live stream and just, uh, published the live, the, the two to three hour live stream on the YouTube channel. By the by, if you're watching this live, oops. Um, oh, what are those? Sorry, I just realized I forgot to pull up my own uh, larger larger chat so I can keep that in my side monitor. There we go. All right. Um, Short-term memory is real today. All right. Uh, so, and, and that was nice, except for the fact that a lot of people weren't too keen on digging into a two-hour video. Uh, even if they would have otherwise binged about two hours worth of content, had it been produced in a shorter form. So much like the nostalgia series that I did over the holidays, I'm going to live stream this in two and a half ish hours, give or take. So if you're with me on Twitch or Mixer right now, hello, thank you. Make sure you uh, follow along to get notified when I get look. When I go live, if you're watching on YouTube in the description below, you'll see links to the Twitch and Mixer accounts. So if you want to uh, see the future, as I'm about to explain, you'll, uh, <laughs> and ironic that we're doing this with Chrono Trigger too, uh, then uh, you can watch live and see the whole deal. What I'm going to do is throughout the live stream, I'm going to pause and insert myself a little cut cue and maybe do a little uh, chat with the chat and then uh, on to the next segment. And when this gets published to YouTube, I'm going to publish it in 20 to 30 minute segments and they will roll out day by day throughout the week. So in other words, tomorrow you'll see this introduction, uh, unless you're on YouTube right now, then you're seeing it now. And the day after you'll see the next part, the day after the next part and so on and so forth. My goal right now is to record enough in the live stream that I can have six episodes go out throughout the week. And then on the seventh day, I'll do another live stream. And so if you want to catch it, I am live at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Thursdays. Games Revisited is Thursdays live 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Twitch and Mixer. I'm simulcasting to both of them, th courtesy of Restream.io. Um, so those links are down in the YouTube description. And if you're watching live and you miss a bit or you want to go back and watch just a particular segment, you can always go to the YouTube channel, which will be in the description on Mixer and Twitch down below. There's links to the YouTube channel and anonjunior.com has links to everything. That is my main website. And uh, it, it is undergoing renovation. Uh, so be patient on that count. All right, enough with the intro. On with the game. 
I, I haven't been running the game because unfortunately I can't figure out a way to mute the stupid thing while I'm trying to do this bit of talking. So uh, we'll, we'll get my handy dandy controller ready, a little more comfy than the SNES controllers of my youth. And uh, let's get the show on the road. We're going to do a little bit of the intro and get getting a, a bit of the game squared away right now i'm going to try to set it up so that way all the grindy bits end up um in the intervening between the live streams uh i will say this though for these uh intro animations they really upped the graphics um the snes uh intro bit here did not oh, why uh oh Well, that's interesting. It didn't show the intro video there. Yikes. All right. Well, go to Steam, get it, and uh, play along as we uh, start a new game. And it's going to give you a little reminder of the controls. Fortunately, <laughs> I'm not doing the console ROM on RetroArch. Otherwise, that um, where, where you see Flee from Battle by holding left and right together. That, that is how you stop a game in RetroArch. <laughs> so I, I guess that's a way to flee from battle by rage quitting the game. So little rundown on the controls there. And I got to remember that um, this controller is modeled after the Xbox button layout, which means that the A and B are reversed from the SNES. I've got a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of unlearning to do because I, I naturally want to keep hitting the A on the right when it is on the left. Um, that'll be fun as we go. All right, let's move on here. Battle mode, you've got active and passive as some options. Uh, even in the wait, it doesn't wait that long. It doesn't wait forever. Like even with battle mode, wait, it won't sit there and uh, pause for eternity while you make your decisions if you spend too much time sitting there figuring out the most optimal attack strategy you're gonna die okay <laughs> just to let you know now active they, they throw it at you hard and heavy so if you're not trying to explain what you're doing if you just want to sit back and enjoy the game or you're doing a speed run or any of that kind of stuff go for the active battle mode less waiting and all the good and bad that comes with it. Uh, so we will be uh, we'll be doing the wait, so that way it gives me a little bit more time to point out what's going on. This is one of the things that I've been debating on. Do I go with the original graphics? All right, so that's uh, graphics pretty close to the original pixel art, just updated for the larger monitors and the larger screens. Because again, you got to remember SNES, SNES, we're talking 1995. It's going up to your CRT television. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, ask your parents or your grandparents, as the case may be. <laughs> and uh, marvel at the changes in technology. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue from there. For the interface, we're going to use a combination of the gamepad and keyboard. Gamepad for all the gameplay controls. Keyboard if we need to type anything out. Let's go ahead and get this game a rolling. All right, I am going to go ahead and use the default names for all the characters. This was one of the games where you could, in fact, change different characters' names. Um, <clears throat> although I noticed that even in the re-release, it... Uh, in the Steam port, as recent as it is, they limit you to the same uh, size names. <laughs> Any name you want, as long as it's five characters or less. Yikes. Okay. Let's go ahead and accept. Is Chrono correct? Yep. Oh, yeah. Look at that pixel art. <laughs> I am kind of happy I went with the traditional graphics. I mean, realistically, for a modern stream, I probably should have been 
using the modern graphics, but this this just uh, it takes me back. So we are at the scene of the Millennial Fair. That was, this game was published before Millennial had a bad connotation, <laughs> and we won't go there. We'll just go that uh, right now it's a thousand years from the foundation of the kingdom. Chrono, 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 are you still sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heightened visual art right there. Well, for the time it was. For the time it was. Hi, Mom. Come on, sleepyhead. It's time to get up. Hmm. That is one thing that I'll have to do. I'll have to go dig up my list of uh, 25 JRPG... Uh, uh, I guess we call them memes now, but... Uh, Tropes is probably a better word. All right. Dear me, I'd forgotten how beautiful Linny's Bell sounds. Um, pay attention to that name. It is possible that uh, it might change later on. Not today. You must have been so excited about the Millennial Fair that you couldn't sleep last night, could you? Well, you better not let that giddiness get you into any trouble. I want you to behave yourself today. <laughs> yes, mother. Come on now. Out of bed with you. Oh, yeah. Look at that pixel art stretch. <laughs> and they, they give you a chance to mess with a few things in the bedroom, which is kind of nice. Gives you a chance to get used to the controls, to interact with things. Um, it's supposed to be a way to check in there, but I guess not. Okay. Downstairs we go. It's about time. By the way, you're going to go see... Oh dear. What was her name? That young adventurous friend of yours. Uh, there are times that I, I do kind of... Wish for the pixel art. Long for the pixel art. Sometimes I wonder if that's why Borderlands... Uh, was as popular as it was because it came out about the time that the people who grew up on this would be looking for some cell shader classical 2D rendering kind of stuff. Except in a fast-paced Switch game and some pimento tacos. Alright, we're going to go ahead and accept the default for Luca's name. Some of these names are going to be interesting. There'll be uh, nice little puns and plays on words. We'll get to those as we go. So. Oh, it did. That's awesome. Yeah. I I, I will admit the Borderlands uh, was very reminiscent. And if you play Minecraft and use Optifine, Optifine will let you uh, get a soul shader-like view for, um, for, uh, for, for the game. It is kind of nice. It gets a Borderlands-esque feel graphics-wise for Minecraft. And I'm, I think there are some other games that have uh, similar mods available. All right. That's right, Luca. You're going to stop by and see her new invention of the fair, aren't you? Why, yes, that would be the plot. Well, run along then and be back before dinner. Hi, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Actually, one of the things I need to do for before uh, next week's stream is I need to uh, set up a little mini controller in the corner somewhere so that way you can see what buttons are being pressed and that sort of thing. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's your allowance, dear. Have fun at the fair. Obtain 200 gold. Oh, I get 200 gold for an allowance, please. <laughs> Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we're in along then and be back before dinner. <laughs> okay. So we're going to actually do a little bit of meandering about. I like that in the bottom left corner, it gives you the time, the year that you're in, 1000 AD. That part's going to become important as we go along. Because, again, with a name like Chrono Trigger, you kind of figure that we're going to be playing around with time. Um, I also kind of like the... Hey, look at me. Hey, listen. Hey, look. All right. 
Let's go into the residence and let's talk to the resident. It's hard to believe our kingdom has stood for a thousand years now. Our king is the 33rd descendant to the throne of Guardia. And uh, in the original console, they didn't say 33rd. Um, yes, we are going to be playing around with some of the guns too. One of the characters, that is all that she uses. So um, we, we will uh, by, by virtue of that. It's a miracle he can manage to rule a kingdom when he can't even keep his own daughter in hand. Oh no, a clue? She's probably th throwing a fit at the castle this very moment, demanding he let her go to the fair. Hmm. Oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha, because triggered. Yeah, there, there, there's another word that's changed in the lexicon, but I'm not going there. Not here. That girl Luca was over in the square going on about how she made the discovery of a lifetime. Something tells me I'm as happy now as I'll ever be. <laughs> Remember that one too. That, that, that might change as we go. Alright, and to the market to find out. Oh yeah, visit our stall in Lenny Square. Remember that name, folks. Alright, uh, before we get to the mayor's manor, let me go check at the truce inn. Play it again, Sam. <laughs> Say, can you spare 10 gold to buy me a drink? No, I can't, but I will. Thanks, let me play you a song in return. Yeah, get used to that theme song too. Welcome, welcome, make yourself at home. I suppose you won't be staying long though. Oh, I hope my shift ends soon, I want to go to the fair too. You been to the fair yet? Nope. What? What are you doing here then? You'll have to wait a thousand years for another millennial fair. The festivities are in Linny Square, just up north. More tents and stalls than you can shake a stick at. Lodging is ten gold. Would you like to stay for the night? Nope. Let me know if you change your mind. And you had something, right? Remember that earthquake we had the other day? Nope. You're an oblivious one, aren't you? Well, never mind then. All right, what if I say yes? <laughs> We've been having far too many lately. Hope is not a sign of something bad about to happen. Oh, yeah. Now. <laughs> this box has been handed down for generations. Should you somehow manage to open it, you are welcome to the contents. Um, you're going to find a lot of these boxes scattered throughout the game. One of the things to keep in mind is that uh, depending on when you open the box will determine what you find in them. You know, so we got Schrodinger's chest here. And uh, the other thing to remember too is if you go to the earliest time available to find it, start to open it and then say, and it asks you, do you want to take the item? And you say, no. And then you go to the latest time the box is available and pick it up again. It'll actually be a powered up version. And then you can go back to the earlier time and pick up the original one. No, that's not convoluted at all. All right. A mysterious force seals it shut. Either way, that, that's not here for, that's neither here nor there for us right now. But that is definitely something to uh, keep, a, keep a watch on. Yeah, no, no. I know, I know. I was trying to see if I could open up the uh, chest there. Apparently I can't. Alright, that's everybody here, right? Alright, so that's True Sin. Now let's go to the Mayor's Manor. And this is the game's tutorial place. You also pick up a few really nice items, so uh, we'll go through here real quick. Get a... Uh, actually... I'm trying to keep an eye on times. Uh, yes, you have to. Uh, you, let me try to figure out the uh, the clearest way to. Uh, 
when you go to that inn in 600 AD, which if I remember right is the earliest time that chest is available, once you're able to open up these boxes, you go back to 600 AD, you try to open it, and then it's going to ask you, do you want to take the item? And you say no. Then you skip as far forward in the future as that inn is available. And then pick it up. The, the specific time frames I'm a little rusty on because I haven't played this game since the uh, mid to late 90s. You know, but uh, I, I do remember that part of the game. And, and I did also double check the, uh, the handy Nintendo Power Guide Vintage. Uh, complete with pages falling out from uh, frequent use. <laughs> Uh, what I am going to do here, though, is I am going to go to this right here. And if you're watching live, don't panic. I'm not cutting off the stream just yet. What I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to insert a little cut card for me to remind myself where to cut for episode one that will go up on YouTube. Live, you'll get to see episode two in a second. So that is my segue to remind you that if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to get notified when new videos go up. You'll, I've got six episodes going between live streams, and at the next live stream, I'll record the next six episodes, so on and so forth. So if you're watching live, you get to know the future. And matter of fact, in a couple of minutes, you'll see what episode two is going to be, long before the people see it on Saturday, <laughs> and all that good fun stuff. So if you're on YouTube and you want to get in on the live action, check in the links below where you'll see links to Twitch and Mixer. If you're watching on Twitch and Mixer and you want to catch stuff that you missed, there's a link below to the YouTube channel. And whatever way you're trying to keep tabs on this crazy endeavor, don't forget to follow, subscribe, all that good fun stuff. Let me uh, hit the title card to leave myself a cut point and then I'll be right back on the live stream.